I had a request from a regular viewer asking me to discuss the kind of chameleon nature of narcissists. So what he means by chameleon nature is effectively narcissists changing their, their behaviours, their likes, their traits to suit the new supply or to, to adapt to the new supply and, and how quickly that can happen. And I think that's, that's something that, that is causing this viewer a lot of distress. And I guess specific examples they gave around were around you know, particularly around changing particular tastes and likes from, from, for example, being extremely concerned around their children and kind of raising their children, you know, being aware of, of things like, you know, skin cancer and, and, you know, the effects of the sun to suddenly being with a new supply and falling in love with sunbathing and becoming, you know, one of the most tanned people around, I think, is, is the quote they gave, you know, as well as, as, well as very fast swinging political views. And um, you know, going from being fairly liberal to to associating with with people on you know on more of the I guess far right you know of, of the spectrum, and it's a difficult one to respond to because I think we've all probably experienced you know the the idea idealization sort of stages the the hyper valuation stages of of narcissists, but it did make me think a lot around kind of the the nature and the adaptation that, you know, that they go through and, and whether we actually truly know what, what narcissists truly like. And I, and I think if I look back at my own experience on this, this is a, you know, I can see plenty of examples through my own relationship and, and particularly with, with where my ex is going now that leads me to the belief that th there's two angles to this. Is one that I don't, I don't know if, if I believe that narcissists really have any true true likes and and when i say likes i guess particularly passions so so do they have anything that they're particularly passionate about you know themselves that they they would do and would do for the rest of their lives and and i guess the other angle that i've witnessed to this as well is is the usage of of kind of beliefs and pursuits and pleasures to kind of ensnare a new supply so if i explore the first point around why do i think that narcissists Kind of adapt their likes and dislikes around a new supply around people you know it may be oversimplifying to, to say that i don't really believe that narcissists have a true personality and i think that comes down to you know the whole true self versus false self thing you know i think the whole nature of narcissistic personality disorder is that their personality is a developed personality to protect their their true personality that's too damaged to be exposed to the world and i think I think within that, you know, they become so accustomed to presenting a front to the world that, that isn't the real them, that actually their beliefs and their, their likes are all just formed as part of that. And I think that's developed through experiences and adapted to the situation they're in. You know, I, I don't think they're, they're existing as themselves in any space at any time. You know, it gets exposed very occasionally. Like I said, I think I've seen, I've seen my my ex's true true inner self i think exposed maybe four or five times in in two decades the rest of the time effectively you're dealing with adapted behaviors you know adapted choices adaptive likes adapted you know personality traits to survive in the in the wider world so i i don't know if if they actually have their own likes or beliefs and that sounds a little bit kind of high level and a little bit vague but you know, there's, there's a few examples in my own in my own relationship that that actually, as I look back, make me make me kind of chuckle a little bit. So, one one very clear is I, I've always been into music. So I, I I play guitar myself, and I've played it for a, you know since I was a teenage a teenage boy, I guess I would call it. I used to be in bands and things when I was younger, and it's something I, I still I still do, you know. As a, as a hobby, as an amateur now, and, you know, just to, just to kind of keep myself entertained. But my, my ex, when I met her, would claim to have done multiple music lessons in multiple instruments and be really into it, but actually when, when pressed on any knowledge, didn't actually have any experience, any, any practical experience or theoretical experience of music at all. And then as far as musical taste as well, if I, if I go back... To her CD collection that was was developed from a teenager up until I guess like now up until a year or so ago, you can clearly see a number of changing styles through changing relationships in there, and 
ending with kind of bands that, that I really liked growing up. And there's an interesting story on this one. So one of my, one of my favourite bands of all time are the LA band Red Hot Chili Peppers. So I, you know, I grew up as a, as a teenager in the 90s and they were one of my favourite bands growing up. And in particular, being a guitarist, their, their guitarist was or is one of my, one of my absolute favourites, a guy called John Frusciante, who's an inspirational guitarist to me. And um, he, he's left the band twice, once after they became really famous in the 90s. And then he came back for a while after a, after a drug stint and then left again and has actually just rejoined recently. There was news recently he's just rejoined them, which was good news. But interestingly, back in, must have been 2003, I saw them at a festival uh, near London. And, and I remember going to this festival with my ex and being absolutely excited because it was his first real album of him being back. And I remember being at that festival and, and saying to her at the time, I'm like, oh my God, that's John Frusciante. He's back. I can't believe I'm seeing him. And it's really weird because over the years, she developed an absolute love for that music, a love, absolute love, and actually kind of became a bit obsessed with him. And to the point where she almost became kind of an expert on him to the, you know, to the point where she, she'd kind of almost not believed that I actually liked him. And I used to like to remind her at the time that she's actually seen him in person. And at the time she had no idea who he was. You know, and I, and I was standing there in absolute awe of him at, at this festival, just like mesmerised by, by seeing him. But she had no clue who he was and had no interest who he was. And I think actually at the time was more interested in seeing Coldplay, who were playing at the festival, who, in my opinion, are absolute garbage. But that's beside the point. But it's, it's kind of weird to see over time how, you know, in that early stage of our relationship, that obviously wasn't her taste. The music wasn't her taste. That individual wasn't her taste. But over time, it almost became kind of more of her taste and more of her thing than it was mine. And towards the end of our relationship as well, um, she actually started to pick up an instrument herself and started to learn to play it. And then interestingly, the other angle to that, you know, the other aspect that I would say is, is not only do they adapt to, you know, the person they're with and, and their tastes and their beliefs, that what I found is, is that they actually adapt those so much as their own that they become a hook to to you know to source a new supply. So the playing of this instrument and the interest in this instrument, the interest uh, interest in this band, became a hook, where you know that she used to to uh, to source her new supplier, her new boyfriend at the moment, to the point where the instrument I actually helped her load the instrument into the car the night that she kind of consummated her relationship with her new supply. And it's just, it's really weird for me to see, to see that shift happening. And I guess the point of me saying that is, I, I don't think there's any real rhyme or reason to it other than that I think the whole, the whole personality of a narcissist is a false presentation to the world. And I think as part of that, it's a very fluid personality. And within that as well, you've also, you have to consider the, the kind of cycle of, of hypervaluation and hyper kind of devaluation. So, you know, I, I certainly believe, and I experienced it, and there's, a, there's a, a strong crossover with borderline personality disorder there that, you know, when they meet a new supplier, they have to fall, you know, absolutely crazily in love with them and, and love everything that they love, and they become the most important person. So the traits that they have then become the traits that the narcissist has. And, and I think that that's just part of the natural cycle of, of falling for them head over heels and allows them to go through that kind of very quick discard. So I don't think, I don't think it's surprising that, you know, an ex would look dramatically different after leaving the relationship. And I think it's a real test. And part of the, part of the thoughts I've had around myself and, and taking some time to quarantine myself is just to try and, try and prove to myself that, that I can be just myself and almost to rediscover who I am. And what, what I found out in the time that I've spent on my own, and although it's been a bit of a lonely time, what I've found is that I still like doing the things that I've always liked doing. So left to my own devices, I have natural things, natural traits that I like to do. So I like to be around my animals. I've always loved being around dogs. I mean, I have cats as well. I, I love the cats, but dogs are my thing. So I, I love spending time with the dogs. In, in the time on my own, I got another dog to keep my other one company. I spend a lot of my time walking them. 
you know, I, I play guitar as much as I possibly can. I, I enjoy it. I, I, I feel slightly stressed when I don't get time to play guitar and I, you know, I, I relish the time I get to do it. I love walking around music shops and, and looking at guitars. You know, I, I just love the smell of it. I love the feel of it. You know, I haven't reverted back to playing video games. I probably would do if, uh, if I had the time, but I'm also slightly addicted to them. So if I start playing video games, I'll, I'll be playing them at like six in the morning. So I try and avoid doing that. But the urge to kind of do things like that is still there. I, I still love watching movies. So I feel, and this isn't a, a comparison versus Narcissus, but I feel like exiting, exiting the relationship I had, my natural tendency is to revert back to the things that I've always liked doing, which, which for me speaks to the fact that they're true passions of mine, they're true, they're things that make me genuinely happy and the things that I identify with that were there before I met my ex. Whereas when I look at my ex and what she was doing before she met me and, and what she developed when she was with me and then where she's focusing on now, it's, it's a constant change. It's, it's, a, it's an ever-changing, ever-evolving picture. And on one hand, you could look at that and say, it's great, people evolve. But on the other hand, I look at it and say, actually, do they actually have any real interests? So in answer to the question as to why you're seeing such a dramatic change and almost a, a complete flip in personality from the person that, that you knew when you were married to them, is that, as horrible as it sounds, the person that you were married to really wasn't into what they were into at the time with you anyway. They were probably adapting to you. And that doesn't mean it's, it's all bad. It just means that really they, they probably didn't have their own identity, their own personality, and picked up your interests just as they are with the new supply now. And, and there's, some, there's some good feeling in that, and I think there's some very negative feeling in that. It can make you feel like, oh, this wasn't really real, which I guess ultimately it, it wasn't. But, you know, on one hand, it is kind of real as well. It's just that they're an ever-adapting person, adapting to their surroundings. Hence, I guess, the chameleon, as, as you mention it. And the, the other interesting anecdote on that as well is the other, the other thing that I, I love doing as well, although I, I, I don't really have the time or, or kind of the the will to do it at the moment. It's not ideal in this country. I, I love riding motorbikes. You know, it's, um, it's, a, it's a real therapy for me. Um, I always have done. And recently when I spoke to my ex, she had, um, she'd spoken to people at her work, a new work around kind of them riding motorbikes as well. And suddenly she was 100% into, into buying a motorbike and learning how to ride it which is completely not her. She used to really not like going on mine. We went around Europe on, on my bike once and, you know, I think she was ready to get the train home. So it's, it's interesting to see that kind of constant latching on to people in her surroundings, whereas I, I don't think I, I have that urge. You know, if people are into their, own, into their own kind of hobbies and interests, I'm happy for them. I'm willing to try other things out, but I'm fairly set in my ways as to what I like doing and I, I kind of know what I like. Whereas I, I still see, if I, if I speak to my ex now, a constant adaptation to her surroundings. So I, I don't, I guess in summary, I feel slightly guilty that I don't know if I've answered the question other than sort of saying the person that you were seeing when you were with them wasn't a real self either. It was an adaptation to the surroundings they were in with you. And that doesn't mean that they didn't like it at the time. That doesn't mean they didn't believe it. It just means that they have a constant shifting kind of like and belief system in summary. And I, and I hope that helps. It probably doesn't answer the question, but I thought I'd talk a little bit about it and just make a short video on it. Um, but if there's anything else I can do to, to try and discuss that, then, then let me know and I'll, I'll try and delve in it a little bit more.